Hi everyone, in this video I will explain how to use a factory pattern with dependency injection in .NET. The factory pattern is a design pattern aimed at separating the creation of objects from their use. The main advantage of this pattern is the abstraction of the object composition mechanism. The factory pattern together with dependency injection offers many other benefits like managing object life cycles, dynamic dependency resolution, dynamic object composition, dependency optimization, etc. We are going to explore such capabilities in this video. So, let's first talk about parameterized dependency injection with factory pattern. Let's assume we want to use a service class from a third-party library that generates dynamic labels for products. As you can see, labeled gen service requires two constructor parameters, prefix and suffix. We will assume these values are consistent throughout our application and come from a configuration file. A service like this is a perfect candidate for a singleton registration in the dependency injection pipeline. However, such simple constructor parameters are not meant for dependency injection as they don't provide additional functionality beyond their immediate values. And since this is a third party library, we can't inject our configuration dependency here. So, how can we wire up such services in the dependency injection pipeline? This is where the factory pattern comes into play. Here, you can see I have prepared the service manager class with some basic code. And I will use this class to register all the services throughout this video. As you can see, I use the options pattern here to bind the values from the app settings file to the label gen options class. Now, it's time to register the label gen service as a singleton service. So, let's call the services add singleton method and I will choose an overload of the add singleton method that accepts a factory delegate. Inside, let's create an options variable and use the service provider with the get service method where for the type parameter I will pass the I options interface with the label gen options generic type. Also, let's use the value property to get the value of the label gen options interface. Now, I can return a new instance of the label gen service with the prefix as the first argument and the suffix as the second one. And as the Visual Studio suggests, I can simplify this implementation. Great, all set here. Now let's open the program class and uncomment these lines. The first thing I do here is call the create service provider to return a new service provider and then use it to get the required service. In this case, label gen service. Then I can simply extract the label using the generate method and print it to the console. So let's run the app and test this solution. And as you can see, we have the label with both a prefix and the suffix applied. Now, let's see how we can create an abstraction over third-party service using a factory class. As you saw in the previous example, the factory delegate offers a quick approach to set up a parameterized service. However, a cleaner and better alternative is to use a wrapper factory class. That said, Let's create a new one in the label gen folder. And I will name it label gen service factory. First, I will create a new private read only label gen service field and name it label gen service. And also a public property of the same type and the same name that encapsulates my private field. Then let's create a constructor and as a parameter, I will provide the I options label gen options parameter named options. So inside the constructor, let's extract the value of the options using the value property. And finally, populate the field with a new object using both the prefix and the suffix properties. Now, 
let's complete this registration inside configure services method. Let's use the add singleton method and provide the factory class as the type parameter. This approach offers better encapsulation and a decoupled architecture. Also, we get rid of the direct dependency on a third party service. Instead, we can now inject or resolve our factory dependency and get access to the service as needed. So, let's do that in the program class. Let's hide these lines and uncomment these. So, the code is pretty much the same. Let's run the app and you can see we get the same output as before. Great, let's move on. A factory class is also handy for conditionally creating objects based on the runtime parameters. Let's consider a scenario where we have multiple device models, each associated with a specific device type value. So, to show how conditional object instantiation works, let's open the iDeviceFactory interface and inside create a single member that returns a device type. Let's name it create device and it will accept a single device type parameter. Now, let's create a new class and name it device factory. This class will inherit from the iDeviceFactory interface and let's implement it right away. Now, I need to inject my label GenServiceFactory which I created in the previous example and to do so, let's create a private read-only label gen service factory field and name it label factory. Also, let's initialize this field with the constructor. We have three device types, watch, phone and laptop and each one inherits from the device record and accepts a label value that we can provide through label gen service factory injection. So, let's do that. Inside the method, I will add a new label variable and call the label factory dot label gen service property dot generate method to get the label with both a prefix and suffix applied. Now, I can use a pattern matching here on the device type parameter and check if the device is a watch I will create a new watch object with a label provided. If the device is a phone, let's create a phone object and pass the label as an argument. Also, we can do the same check for the laptop and also create a new laptop object with the same argument. Finally, if none match, I will throw a new not implemented exception. That's it. Of course, I need to register this one as a service inside the configure services method. And I will register it as a transient service. Now, inside the program class, I will hide these lines and enable the other ones. I fetch the device factory service with my service manager and create two devices, a laptop and a watch. Also, we can verify that we generated the correct devices by checking their types. That done, let's run the app and we can see I have the proper devices generated. So, in this example, we talked about conditional object instantiation, but we can also use the factory pattern for the conditional service resolution. I can use the factory class to conditionally switch between different concrete implementations of a service. As an example, let's consider we have three different implementations of the iRelay service interface. Each of these services defines logic for a specific relay mode. Although we have simplistic implementation here, in reality, they can be full-fledged services with their dependencies. That also means they need explicit registration in the dependency injection pipeline. So, let's add that in the service manager class and register all of them as transient services. Right after the registration, I will create a new class and name it Relay Service Factory. Here, I will create a new private read-only variable 
of the I innumerable I relay service type and name it relay services. Also, let's use the constructor injection here to initialize this field. Now, the most interesting part here is that with this simple injection, the app will automatically pull all I relay service implementations from the dependency injection container. After that, the resolution of the target I relay service is just a matter of a simple lookup within this collection. So, let's create a new method that returns I relay service, name it get relay service, and provide a single relay mode parameter. All I have to do here, as I already said, is to find the first service where the relay mode equals the relay mode parameter. With this in place, I have to register this factory class as another service. And again, I will create a transient service here. I can now pick any variant of iRelay service on demand. So let's hide these calls and enable these. We already know everything we need to know about this code. That said, let's run the app and you can see the required outputs. Finally, Let's see how an abstract factory works with dependency injection. A factory may act as an abstraction over other factories. This is what we refer to as the abstract factory pattern. For example, this might be the case when we deal with groups of similar objects from different families. That said, let's take a look at our device factory class, which we use to retrieve three kinds of devices, laptop, phone and watch. In addition, we now have the second generation of these products, smart laptop, smartphone and smartwatch. That means we need a new factory. This is nothing different from the previous device factory, except that we now provide newer models. Both factories employ the same core operations, so we introduce a common interface of iDeviceFactory. This interface is our abstraction over all such factory variants. With that in mind, Let's register them in the DI container. So, we have two factories registered as services, and now I can bring them under the umbrella of a master factory. For that, I need a new class, and I will name it Master Device Factory. I will again create a new private field that returns an I enumerable, but this time of I Device Factory type, and name it device factories. Also, I'll use the constructor to initialize this one. Now, I need two methods. The first one will return iDeviceFactory and I will name it getClassicFactory. Inside, I want to filter the factory from the device factories collection by using the offType method and passing the device factory as the type I want to extract and call the first or default to get the concrete factory. The second method is almost the same. So let's copy this one and paste it. Change the name of the method to get smart factory and change the type to smart device factory. As you see, I expose two separate methods to resolve the classic and smart variants independently. Now, I have to register this master factory in the dependency injection container. And now, as a result, we can create an iDevice factory variant as needed inside the program class. So, let's run the app. And as expected, both device factories work in the same fashion, but provide the device instances from their family line. Excellent. I hope you understand now how the factory pattern is powerful when you work with the dependency injection. And I can finish the video. Please let me know what you think about the video, as you can do that by dropping a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.